What is up, bros and brorettes? I am Ink Slasher, and earlier this week, I made a video talking about the flaws in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The five main things that I believe that the game did wrong. Was it the only five? Probably not. Was it the big five? I believe so. And today, we're going on the other side of things and looking at the five things that I believe that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare did really well. In fact, some of these things that I'm going to talk about today, I think they did even better than other Call of Duty games. However, this does come down to personal opinion, and if you disagree, agree with me feel free to let me know down in the comment section below all i ask is if you enjoy the video find it entertaining it would be fantastic if you could hit that like button so here is the question in a game that the community really didn't enjoy what are the things that the game actually did right and in some situations better than other call of duty games well let's start out with the obvious the first thing is dlc weapons so how did the dlc weapons work in infinite warfare well it was pretty simple if you had the season pass you would get the new dlc weapon 100% free at least the base variant if you didn't have a season pass you would have to complete a pretty damn easy challenge and when you did so you would then receive the base weapon however any of the weapons variants you would have to receive through supply drops in fact most of these weapons were quartermaster variants which meant the only way to get this variant was through supply drops however the weapon itself was given out for free which is a way of keeping the community involved with the game and keep people playing for longer and I think this is one thing that Black Ops 3 really could have taken out of Infinite Warfare's book. As we know in Black Ops 3 the only way to get the supply drop weapons is to just keep buying or keep trying to get keys and opening supply drops and just hope that you get lucky. Whereas Infinite Warfare just gave them to us for free which is something that I really really enjoyed about the game. The second thing and you may disagree with this one this one is completely personal opinion I really enjoyed the look of the maps in this game. I like the way that they incorporate incorporated a ton of color and made them very vibrant and made those colors pop. If you go back and look at one of the previous Call of Duty games, Call of Duty Ghosts, made by Infinity Ward, it just didn't look great. Most of the maps were really brown, really gray, none of the colors popped, and that was a big complaint that people had with Call of Duty Ghosts. Fast forward to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, almost every single map has bright and vibrant colors. Now, I will say the one thing that they didn't do well in this game is if you don't change your settings, your graphic settings in game, the game doesn't look nearly as good as it possibly could. If you turn your contrast up and get rid of the motion blur, you can really make this game look nice. However, a lot of people just simply didn't know that, and I really don't know why they shipped the game with those settings. It was a very odd thing that a lot of people had to get used to at first. However, even though they made that mistake there, I will say I really do enjoy the bright and vibrant maps and I hope other Call of Duty games stick with this theme as well. But like I said, if you don't like the bright and vibrant maps, let me know down in the comments. I'll be really interested to hear what you have to say about that. This next thing I'm only giving out a half point for, but it is communication with the community. For the first two months that the game was out, there was next to no communication with the community. We didn't know what was going on with leaderboards, with create an emblem, we had no idea what was going on behind the scenes, and a lot of people started complaining about it. And eventually, the developers started hopping on Reddit and tell us exactly what was going on behind scenes. This was really refreshing. All of a sudden, we knew what was going on, what was getting patched, when it was getting patched, why it was getting patched. Things we had never seen before in Call of Duty. Now, this didn't go on through the whole life cycle of Infinite Warfare, and that's why I'm only giving out a half point for this. However, this is something that I think changed the Call of Duty community forever, because the reason why I say that, as of right now, Sledgehammer is already being really straightforward with us. Even in the beta, they were giving us patch notes via Reddit. The only thing that I would say that they could improve over this is to send us the patch notes in-game. As soon as we download an update, there should be something that pops up in-game telling us what they patched and why. Many other video games do this, and for some reason Call of Duty never has. Instead of just posting it on Reddit, post it both on Reddit and throw it up on screen in-game. I think a lot of people would really, really appreciate that. But like I said, I think they deserve a half point for that because by the middle of the game's life cycle, we were getting exact patch notes via Reddit, and I really do appreciate that. The next thing, and I think they deserve really big kudos for this because this is something I've been begging Activision and Call of Duty to do for a very, very long time, and that is events. And I don't just mean the Christmas event, Days of Summer, and now the Halloween event. I don't just mean those. I mean literally weekendly events. Every single weekend, they have a featured playlist. Sometimes they have that playlist with double 
double XP or double keys. Sometimes they have the Grand Slam events, which are always awesome. And what this does is every single weekend is when video games get their most amount of players. By adding these events into the game, it makes it important for people to actually play those things. On top of that, another thing that they added was stuff like Gesture Warfare. Weekend specific game modes that people could play for only a limited amount of time. And I know not everyone loved Gesture Warfare. However, you gotta realize that you are playing a game. If you think all the way back to Halo 3, Halo 3 did this every single weekend. They had a featured playlist, one of which was something called Griff Ball. Something that had nothing to do with the shooter game, was just a fun game mode that people could play. And I think this is something that video games have got further and further away from, and I'm really glad that Infinity Ward and Infinite Warfare brought it back. I love the weekend events, I love the uh, seasonal events, which are like the Christmas, Halloween, and Days of Summer events, and I really hope that in the future, Call of Duty games stick with that. Not only with a weekend playlist, but also the season seasonal ones as well. The next one's not quite as big for me, but it's really noticeable when you go back and play older Call of Duty games. The loading times in Infinite Warfare are a quarter of what they are in Black Ops 3, and one of the reasons for that is while you're waiting in the pregame lobby, the next game is actually loading, something that no other Call of Duty game has ever done. It's a real beneficial thing and speeds up the amount of time you have to wait to actually get into a game. It's a very small thing that a lot of people may not notice, but if you go back and play previous Call of Duty games, you get really fed up and you're like, why is this game taking so long to load? And then you realize that Infinite Warfare actually shortened those loading times, which is really nice to see. Finally, last, but absolutely not least, we have Zombies. Now, I know not everybody loves the Zombies mode in Infinite Warfare, but I really enjoyed it. The thing with the Zombies mode in Infinite Warfare is it's not at all like Zombies from Treyarch games. It's similar, but really not the same. The thing with the Infinite Warfare Zombies is it doesn't take itself quite as seriously as the Treyarch Zombies. And the reason why I say that is it's more cartoony, there's more jokes going on behind the scenes, and the overall themes of it are just kind of a little bit more silly. And I like that. I like that they tried to differentiate themselves from Treyarch Zombies. I like that. Now, I, like I said, I know not everyone loves that, but I really enjoyed it. In fact, I found myself playing a lot of this Zombies, and I don't normally find myself to really be a Zombies player, so that was really refreshing as well. That being said, though, back in Call of Duty Ghost, I also really enjoyed Extinction, and I know not everyone enjoyed that as much as I did. The one thing I will say is I have actually been fortunate enough to meet Lee Ross and the team that works on the Zombies down at Infinity War. Ward. And the thing is, is they're super passionate about what they do. They love the zombies maps they make, they loved Extinction, and it really shows through because I really enjoyed playing not only just the first zombies map in Infinite Warfare, but all of them throughout all of the DLC. So I think out of anything that I listed on this list, I would really say the thing probably that I enjoyed most in Infinite Warfare has to go out to the zombies mode, which is shocking for me because normally I strictly play multiplayer in Call of Duty games. But guys, like I said, if you disagree with me, if you hated the zombies mode, if you loved it, let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining, it'd be great if you could hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, like what you see and want to see some up and coming Call of Duty World War II videos, that subscribe button is sitting there with your name on it. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out.